uh, just to recap synchronization failure is wherein uh, you're triggering a process by means of outbound message uh, so it's a headless process uh, you have no idea if the uh, integration succeeds or fails but you would definitely want to keep a track of all the failures so how do you achieve that uh, in our case we have a lead synchronization between salesforce and oracle and i'm going to simulate a fault in oracle so it's going to throw an exception and what i'm going to do is i'm going to write it to a custom object in salesforce so that you can actually create a report in salesforce with all these error messages or you could take those details and go back to informatica cloud put in those details try to retrieve that process and see why that process failed so those are some of the things that we are going to look at uh, in this particular pattern click this button all right so we're going to demonstrate this by means of a compound message so i'm going to log into my salesforce org i'm going to look at leads uh, i'm going to synchronize this particular lead edit save this should trigger a outbound message and it should create a new process in Informatica. Synchronize leads. In order to simulate the fault, what I'm doing is I'm trying to create the lead. I'm not really checking if the lead exists and update that lead. Uh, but in my database, I actually have a lead with that particular name. So obviously, it's, uh, the lead creation is going to fail uh, with a primary key violation error. Uh, th that's not the interesting part. The interesting part is how I'm actually capturing this error message and conveying it. So in this case, I actually catch the fault and I'm creating a record in Salesforce. So I have a custom object which takes in all these parameters, the actual process ID, which is very important for real time. Why is the process ID important? Let's say you have thousands of these synchronizations that happen during a day. With the process ID, it's very easy to come and look for a process. You have the actual process name, the error code, and the error message. So let's go to Salesforce and see how this log looks like. I'm going to click this record. It has the actual process ID, the process name, actual error code, actual error description and the salesforce object id so you could easily generate a report uh, with all these errors and then later come back to informatica and use the information from the report to retrieve the process and troubleshoot the process so this is an example of an asynchronous pattern